This car kicks ass, and I can watch Madagascar while I'm driving. What kind of music do you like, Gloria? Hippo hop. Woohoo! Yeah, baby! <laughs> Dude, those animals are so fucking funny, they make me want to merge without looking. <laughs> Madagascar, the absolute cultural reset of a movie that shaped our society into what it truly is today by giving a voice to the feet levels of the world. Although Madagascar is a trilogy and a godsend of one at that, we're only going to be talking about the first movie in this video today and the impact that it had on not only my personal life but on our society as a whole. <laughs> Madagascar was the 10th movie released by the animation studio DreamWorks who have released some of the most iconic movies known to man such as Shrek 2 and the Bee movie which is my favourite movie of all time because you know we must praise Barry B. Benson. Oh. So the movie actually has a very you know a very star studded cast but the cast is actually quite ironic because of events that have happened in the last year or so so I'll go over who the cast are of this movie right so you've got Ben Stiller as Alex the Lion right who you know you've seen all the Zoolander memes as Quite, it's, it's quite ironic, it's quite funny. You've got David Schwimmer as Melman the Giraffe, right? But then you've got Jada Pinkett Smith as Gloria and Chris Rock as Marty the Zebra, which is very, very ironic. Okay. It was released on the 27th of May 2005 and that day, we as a society were truly blessed with a little gift from God. And I think it would only be appropriate if we went through the entire movie and just appreciated the absolute masterpiece that really is Madagascar. <laughs> The movie opens with Marty thrashing about a forest having a grand old time to himself. However, he is then jump scared by his good homie Alex the Lion and it is then revealed that Marty was just having a little daydream. It was all in his head because Marty is a schizophrenic. It is then revealed to the audience that Marty and Alex are just two of the animals that reside in the Central Park Zoo in New York. It is then also revealed to the audience that it is Marty's birthday and Alex gives Marty a birthday present which is a snow globe of Alex the Lion. Alex has basically given Marty his his merch and this is because Alex the Lion, as we will see throughout this whole movie, is a bit of a narcissistic man and needs to be stopped. Now Alex and Marty have a conversation about how Marty is just bored of his life at the zoo. Alex basically just tells him to shut up and to silence himself and to change his attitude towards his life and that he will be happy and Marty just continues to be depressed about his life. Someone help my guy. The zoo then opens to the public and Alex harasses all the other local animals and Alex is is excited on this particular day because it is a field trip day meaning that he's excited to see the children it's just a bit suspicious someone check this man's hard drive now the rest of this scene just kind of follows like the children in the zoo and like the people in the zoo and stuff just kind of going around and seeing all the different animals and stuff and I also want to point out right there's a scene where like Alex is like on his pedestal and he's doing like the roar and stuff and he makes like the zoolander face and I just thought that was quite a nice wee touch by like the animals like that's very very wholesome. We are then introduced to the penguins who are trying to dig their way out of the zoo to get back to Antarctica however the penguins end up digging their way into Marty's enclosure and they tell him that they're digging their way back to the wild because animals shouldn't be locked up. Now Marty is shook to his core because he didn't think that the wild was real, like he thought the wild was just like a figment of his imagination, like he didn't know that he could actually go there. So he's really really like shook and he really really wants to go right and he's like hatched this idea that he's going to follow the penguins, however the penguins disappear and just like end up gone their own way. So the penguins have planted the seed that the, the wild is real, if you will. Now the zoo shuts and we are properly introduced to the other two main characters, Gloria and Melman and they're all gathered to basically celebrate Marty's birthday. Now Marty tells his homies that when he blew out his candles he wished that he could go back to the wild and they all freak out on him. They basically slap him silly and tell him to shut up. Marty is very woke you know like he he doesn't fall for the tricks placed to us by society. He knows what's up but his friends are asleep you know like they don't see reality for what it truly is and Marty just can't stand for this so he tries to convince his friends that they are being held captive by the zoo and that they should be allowed to go back to the wild to you know thrash about in the trees and the grass and, and whatever it is animals do in the wild I don't know what they do to be honest right but he wants to go back and do that and he wants to take his homies with him and he's like why are you guys like why do you want to be prisoners I don't understand now Gloria and Melman go back to the enclosures leaving Alex and Marty alone and they decide to talk Alex tries to convince Marty that life at the zoo is very epic and Marty is having absolutely none of it so Alex tries to cheer him up by singing a wee song 
along. And this is kind of like the wee friendship thing. It's actually quite wholesome. However, they get told to shut up while they're singing and it's just a very wholesome scene between these homies. Marty tries to get Alex to get a train with him to the wild and Alex basically tells him to silence himself yet again and so Marty acts like he was just having a wee giggle and they both go to sleep. Now during the night when all the animals are sleeping, Melman wakes Alex up and basically tells him that Marty has gone missing and that he's not in his enclosure and this makes all of his homies freak the hell out, right? So Gloria, Melman and Alex are basically freaking out trying to figure out where Marty has gone and they kind of decide that he has probably gone to Central Station so they basically decide to hatch a plan to go follow him to bring him back to the zoo. While this is going on and while Marty's homies are freaking out about his whereabouts, Marty is walking the streets of New York on his way to Central Station and there's a police officer who sees Marty and calls for backup. Now Marty basically arrives at Central Station and tries to figure out how he gets to the wild from the train station. However, while this is happening, his homies show up and Alex tackles him to the ground and basically is like, what the hell is your problem? However, before this even happens, Alex is assaulted by an old lady, someone called Peter on this bitch. Now, the police all show up and corner all the animals and drug them. Alex wakes up to see that him and all his friends have been put in separate crates and are being sent back to the wild because them escaping showed the humans that animals shouldn't be held in captivity and that they want to go back to the wild. So basically, the humans have decided to just send the animals from the zoo back to the wild. However, when the drugs wear off Alex for the second time, he wakes up and realises that he's actually on a boat within this crate. Like, the crate has been locked and the other animals basically wake up as well and they all start talking and stuff. And they kind of establish that they're being transported to a different zoo because that's what they think is happening to them. They don't understand that they're actually getting sent back to the wild. So Marty and Alex begin to fight because Alex wants Marty to basically take accountability for his actions because this is kind of all his fault and the others are basically telling them to stop fighting and that they're homies and that they should just stop this nonsense. Now while this is happening the penguins are basically on this boat as well and they basically escape from their crate and decide to hijack the boat by assaulting all the crew on board. Now basically while this is happening Alex and Marty are fighting and the tie around all their boxes comes undone so all the boxes are just flying all over the boat and as the penguins basically turn the ship all the crates of our four main characters fall off the boat and they all fall into the water and float away. Now Alex is the first to wash up onto an island and basically freaks the hell out because he's so confused about where he is. You need to keep in mind this guy's only ever been in a zoo. Like imagine like just like being in one place your whole life and just being pure thrown into somewhere else. It'd be pretty traumatic as well. This guy's got a lot of baggage you know. However in the morning all the other animals show up on the island one by one and basically find Alex and Alex is happy because you know he's got all his homies there and he He's not as spooked anymore. Now Marty and Alex then do that iconic scene where they basically run to each other and then Alex chases them because this is all his fault. Melman then tells all the other animals that he believes that they're in San Diego because of all the sand and stuff and that they have been transported to the San Diego Zoo. The animals then hear music and decide to run towards it because they've established that humans like a wee boogie you know so if they hear music then there will be humans because you know you need some music to boogie. However instead of finding a party full of humans they find a party full of lemurs and this is where we are introduced to the single most important character in this whole movie the absolute god the absolute icon that is king julian king julian then sings the iconic song i like to move it move it and this scene is just so iconic i can't like never in cinematic history has a song been taken from the gutter and made to be so iconic he is an absolute icon however gloria melman and marty then realize that alex is missing because he was beaten up by the plants and the wildlife while running towards the music so it was just the three of them who found King Julian and all of the lemans. Now basically while Melman, Marty and Gloria discuss where Alex is, the party is then stopped at the sounds of the lemas screaming and shaking and crying violently at the arrival of the Fusses. The Fusses call not another icon in this movie more. However, Alex then shows up and accidentally saves Mort. He didn't mean to do it but he does because he's just a big scary man. Mort then runs back to the other lemas and they're all spooked to their calls because these big massive animals have basically scared the animals that scare them. I don't know if that sentence made any sense but they're basically scared of the four main characters because they're like what are those animals? Who are those guys? Their motives are unknown and they basically send more out to figure out who the four main characters are and like what their deal is, what their motives are if you will. However before they actually throw more out to do this, this is going to sound so suspicious right but I will be talking about this scene a wee bit later on right because it is quite important to the cultural importance of this movie right but for all your feet lovers out there this scene's for you. So basically there's a scene right before
helpful. They kick more out to go talk to like the main characters. Well, Mo basically grabs onto King Julian's feet and like there's just an exchange of like stop touching my feet Mo. Now when they actually do send Mo out after the whole feet incident and stuff, there's another iconic moment that happens like right after it because this movie is just filled with so many iconic moments but basically Mo is like looking at them and they've like gathered around them. Alex says there. to Mo, which spooks him to his core and makes him shake and cry violently but this scene is just so iconic I can't I love it so much the lemurs basically decide that they aren't scary like they basically decide that like they're, they're good guys and that they're fine and that they go out to basically say hello to them say hi there to them if you will King Julian then greets the main characters like the absolute icon he is and he thanks them for spooking away the fusses there's also this other like iconic moment in the meeting of the lemurs and the main characters right so basically I'm gonna refer to them as this from like for like the rest of the movie because I just think it's so funny right but so basically throughout this whole thing Maurice keeps referring to the main characters as the giants and basically he asks them where are you giants from and Alex replies New York and then King Julian shouts all hail the New York giants and it's it's just so it's just a, it's a little giggle you know now the lemurs basically inform them that they are not in San Diego Zoo at all but they are in fact in the wild and this makes Alex shake and cry violently but Marty is very happy about it and he's so excited to be in the wild because this is his dream like this is where he wanted to be. Now to try and make Alex feel better Gloria and Melman basically try to tell him that the humans will turn the ship back around to come back and get them when they realise that they're not on the ship and we are then shown that the ship that was hijacked by the penguins has actually arrived in Antarctica. They aren't coming back for the New York Giants. Now Melman then has a funeral for himself because because you know R.I.P. Chief and Marty and Alex just basically keep bickering back and forth and basically just giving each other a hard time. Now because of this Alex basically decides to split the island in two between Marty and the rest of them but on Alex's side he decides to make a sculpture basically of like the Statue of Liberty and Melman then accidentally burns the sculpture down making Alex shake and cry violently yet again. There's a lot of shaking and crying going on in this movie you know. Meanwhile the lemurs have a meeting in this aeroplane where they basically discuss the New York Giants. Basically King Julian decides that the giants will protect the lemurs from the fusa and the lemurs all like this idea however Maurice basically questions why the fusas were so spooked by Alex and suggests that they should also fear Alex because they don't know what his motives are. His motives are unknown as I have said throughout this whole video. <laughs> this is also setting something up for a wee bit later so keep this in mind you know. Now King Julian literally tells Maurice to shut up <laughs> like he's such an icon <laughs> I literally love him so much. Anyway back to the New York Giants. Marty makes an epic shelter and so Alex becomes very jealous of this. He becomes jealous of him and his boogie and when his homies decide that they're going to go to Marty's side of the island to basically go and see what the shelters are about, this makes Alex even more jealous and even more salty because you know his friends are snakes. Marty tries to convince Alex to join them on Marty's side of the island but Alex tells him to piss off and to leave him alone. However Alex then succumbs to peer pressure and arrives on Marty's side of the island and apologises for being such a rude hoe. Marty then accepts and they thrash about in Marty's shelter and have a cute wee time with themselves. However, this scene is quite important and you wouldn't think it is but, but it truly is, right? Because it is setting up the fact that Alex is really hungry and he can't eat like plants and like seaweed like the other animals can, like he needs to eat meat. And also I want to point out like steak is like Alex the lion's like only personality trait, like it's literally all he talks about, like it's just my god, like get some new hobbies. He's my guy. Now that night Alex dreams about steak because he literally is a very hungry guy but he also has nothing else to think about because he's just he's got nothing going on in his life except steak you know. However when he wakes up he's actually licking Marty's back and this freaks all of his homies out because this, this is a bit weird until like licking your pal's back is a bit weird. This man honestly needs to be put on like some sort of register honestly like my god. Now this is the beginning of Alex's kind of transformation from nice homie to crazy hoe. Now while these shenanigans are happening we are then shown the penguins who have actually arrived in Antarctica and they are having an absolute rubbish time and they think it's trash so they basically decide to go back on the boat and to basically sail somewhere else. Now basically because King Julian wants to keep the New York Giants on his good side he basically wakes them up and shows them this different side of the island that they hadn't seen before. Marty and Alex run around and it's very wholesome very cute however this wholesome energy is then gone when Alex begins to basically find the adrenaline within and runs 
very very fast you know as his crazy wild animal transformation is almost complete. Now this kind of wild energy that Alex has while running about with Marty is kind of kept up when they go back to the main bit where all the lemurs basically gather to like eat and stuff like that so like when they're back there Alex is basically thrashing about and jumping all over everybody and just being an absolute nuisance. Now Marty basically tells King Julian that Alex is the king of New York. This is just not factually correct right because the real king of New York is Sal Volcano but you know like just because this movie is an absolute 10 out of 10 we'll let it slide. However because he's all wild and like a crazy whore now and he's basically just out his face right he basically just starts thrashing about on this rock like the absolute crazy animal that he is and he's just acting very very like erratically and basically as this is happening the Fusa turn back up again however as they're basically approaching the lemurs to, to try and eat them Alex roars like an actual lion which spooks the entire life out of all of the Fusas and they run away however this is the absolute pinnacle of his transformation into spooky wild animal and you know this transformation is complete and everyone's cheers are basically abruptly stopped when Alex basically bites Marty's ass. <laughs> now, that's just a bit suspicious if you ask me you know but <laughs> my god. Now Maurice basically pipes up to tell King Julian that he told him so and that Alex is like a danger to society. He tells the New York Giants that Alex is a predator and that he sees them as food and not their friends because he's a wild animal now and King Julian has heard enough of this and banishes Alex to where the Fusas live. Now Alex basically goes full on crazy bitch and basically chases his homies trying to eat them and King Julian has to smack him on the head which gets him basically out of his trance and he basically kind of realises what he's done and apologises and runs away to where the Fusas live to basically live his life in isolation. This is so sad. Now there's like a wee sad montage um, of Alex's homies finding their way about the island without each other and Marty basically regrets coming to the wild because now they've lost Alex who was like his best friend and this is it's actually very sad like oh my god my guys because they're so sad that they've lost Alex they decide that they're going to make a plan to basically get Alex back to normal because they miss him so much however as they're talking the boat with the penguins on it basically returns for them the penguins dock the boat at the island and come off and they decide to hatch a plan to get Alex back to normal however Gloria and Melman don't really like this plan and they don't really want Marty to go back to get Alex because they think it's really dangerous so they tell him just to wait until the humans get there however as the penguins are basically talking to them Marty basically sees his chance to escape and he runs into the wild after Alex so because of this the penguins basically make a plan to go find Marty to basically save him from Alex and from any danger that he may find himself in now basically Marty finds Alex eventually and tells him to come back because the boat is there and it's going to take them back to New York however Alex is full of self-pity you know because he thinks that he's a monster Marty tries to reason with him and Alex says he doesn't want to hurt Marty anymore and you know it's actually so sad like, like you know Alex is actually kind of matured he's stopped being such a narcissistic man however as they're having this conversation the Fusa basically start to kind of emerge from the darkness if you will and they start eyeing up Marty while he's trying to talk to Alex so they don't see the Fusa there they're basically talking to each other and they don't they don't notice that they're there but they're there they're, they're emerging from the darkness Marty then sings the song that Alex sung to Marty at the beginning of the movie to try and get him to kind of snap out of his mood and to remember how much they loved each other and how good of a homie he really is it's so wholesome I love this goddamn movie so much however as this is kind of happening the Fusa basically begin to attack and chase Marty away from Alex's new like enclosure like his new house if you will and just as Marty's kind of running away and stuff Melman Gloria and the penguins show up to basically help Marty run away and escape from the Fusas however when it seems like they they were going to lose this fight Alex shows up acting like he was going to eat his homies and he's basically like no Fusas these are my bitches you can't have them and everybody is shook to their coals they think Alex is going to eat them however plot twist he ends up telling Marty that they're going to pretend that Alex is going to eat them so that they can escape from the Fusas and it's such a wholesome moment and that's what they do and they all run away back to the boat this movie is actually filled with like so many wholesome moments like this is why it's a 10 out of 10 top tier film you know now basically they go back to where the boat is because they think that they're going to go on the boat to go back to New York but before that they basically have like a final dinner like a final feast if you will with King Julian and all the lemurs and the penguins and stuff like that they basically just say goodbye now basically Alex tries fish for the first time and likes it so he won't be going savage anytime soon and won't try to bite his homies again which is pretty epic you know now there's another very wholesome moment when King Julian decides to give Alex his crown very king like behaviour very iconic behaviour now after their dinner the New York Giants basically decide that they're going to go onto the boat and they talk about how they're going to go on like a tour of the world before they go back to New York officially and they're talking about 
going to all these different countries and so excited to basically go home and like it's just very wholesome and stuff. However, it is then revealed by the penguins that the boat is actually out of gas and that they are stuck in Madagascar forever. And that is the end of the movie and oh my god, round of applause, that movie was absolutely 10 out of 10, I loved it so much. This movie was genuinely like the greatest thing I have ever witnessed with my own two eyes. It is an absolute masterpiece. Like I literally have no other comments, it was genuinely like a 10 out of 10. Like the voice acting, the characters, the humour, it's just so incredibly god -worthy. Like I think like the fact that there's so many wholesome moments as well, like there's so many like heartwarming moments and they feel earned, like you believe this friendship between Marty and Alex like you actually f can believe the fact that they're friends and even though like nature would say that they shouldn't be friends they are and it's so wholesome and I love this goddamn movie I don't care what anybody says if people think it's not a good movie you actually like will get scalped about because it's a 10 out of 10 movie I love it so much and I have no other comments your honor it's a masterpiece hi there made $556.6 million at the box office and it had a budget of $75 million so it made a, it made a good wee profit for DreamWorks you know like they got a bit of money for that and you know what they deserve that profit for giving us the masterpiece that is Madagascar. However although I think the movie is very epic and amazing and like the best thing to ever grace this planet it got very mixed reviews right because a lot of people in this world have absolutely no taste whatsoever they have absolutely no ability to look at a piece of media and just acknowledge how great it is because they just want to make everything negative and like they deserve to be slapped they deserve to be scalped about by the hand of god and that is exactly what will happen to them you fat bitch the movie was also nominated for a bunch of awards, however it only actually won a few, including a few Kids' Choice Awards. It also won an MTV Award for Best Cartoon as well. But you know, if it was up to me, it would have won every single award it was nominated for because it's just such a breathtaking piece of media. Like, in the Academy needs to just have a wee word about itself. Absolute holes. Now, the success of this movie was a godsend to DreamWorks because they were able to milk it for everything it had, right? So, for example, they have sequels to this movie, like it's a trilogy and everything. There's spin-off movies as well as spin-off TV shows. Like there's so much within the Madagascar cinematic universe and it's all because of the success of this first movie. It was as if it was like a gift from God sent down to everyone in society because everybody benefits from it, you know. DreamWorks benefits from the fact that they get to make lots of cash money and we benefit because we get to watch the masterpiece that is Madagascar. Thank you to our Lord and Saviour. <laughs> Now, this movie, like most DreamWorks movies, has had a huge impact on our culture as a society. However, it has also had a huge impact on internet culture as well. There are so many memes and like internet phenomenons that come from this movie and like scenes and characters within this movie. Like there's so many of them. And I'm just gonna go over like a couple of like the big ones. So let's just let's just get into it. Now, there are scenes from the movie that have become memes within themselves, such as the scene where Alex meets Mort for the first time and basically says hi there to him which is one of my favourite scenes in the whole movie it's very iconic now basically one of the most iconic Madagascar memes in my opinion just because I've seen it so much comes from this video that was published on the 21st of June 2021 called the ultimate Madagascar recap cartoon uploaded by this absolute icon right here now this video is basically like a recap of the movie as the title would suggest it's basically done in their animation style because you know very talented individual it goes through like a couple of the scenes in the movie and stuff but there's this one scene that I kind of discussed like you know while I was like going through the movie and stuff and it's like basically the scene where Mort is like hanging on to King Julian's feet. Now feet lovers of the world were united when this animation dropped and this absolute icon basically animated that scene but had Mort like basically like being the ultimate feet lover. The person that uploaded the original video had to actually take that scene out but it didn't stop people from like re-uploading it and like just making it a meme and it just became such a cultural phenomenon within itself. It's just so iconic and this is what I mean by like this movie just gives a voice to the feet levels of the world and that's what makes it truly spectacular. It gives a voice to the voiceless. Now another very iconic Madagascar meme comes from this video that was uploaded on the 7th of December 2022 where King Julian sadly tells Mauricio that he cannot move it move it anymore. <laughs> now this video done very well at the time however the audio and the video itself have both went viral on TikTok as of late like when I'm recording this video 
sale. It's been around on TikTok for a couple of months now and it just will not go away. Now finally, I just wanted to touch upon this tweet that was posted on the 21st of December 2022 on Twitter and it states, quote, Madagascar movies are the pinnacle of animated comedy. Now basically this got absolutely everybody to basically start posting and remembering Madagascar and basically got people to kind of talk about how incredibly spectacular it is and how breathtaking the movie truly is. My whole Twitter feed was just Madagascar moments and you know that brief moment in history when everybody was posting their favourite Madagascar moment, order within all society was truly restored. <laughs> Now, in conclusion, Madagascar, although having mixed reviews, was and always will be one of my favourite animated movies of all time. Although the plot and story aren't as hard hitting or deep as like the B movie per se, from the characters to the plot to the wholesome moments to the giggles and the joy that it truly brings people, I think we as a society should all give the movie the respect it truly deserves, as it truly is a godsend of a movie.